Hey YouTube, this is The Art of Prepping. Thanks for joining me today. From time to time I get questions about health and how it relates to prepping. I think this is really essential to, uh, to do a recap, so let's just do that. Let's talk about the parameters of health. Now, I don't have this written down in front of me. Uh, this is going to be more spontaneous. And I'm out in the woods. I'm not using any kind of special effects or any of my, uh, my editing software, even though it's very primitive. <laughs> but it is what it is. And uh, even though my audience is probably not very large, <laughs> which is okay, uh, those who watch, I do this for you. Obviously, this is not so much what you consider uh, that beneficial to me. Uh, but I do get a lot out of, in, in a way, um, interacting with you guys and um, maybe uh, long-term uh, contributing to the overall um, field of knowledge within uh, the prepping community and within YouTube. And so the little contribution that I can make, <clears throat> and of course, there's all kinds of crows that come by right when I do this video. It's always a little distraction here and there when I do videos, but we're going to keep on pushing through. The parameters of health. Now, a lot of people have symptoms, and there's no, no reason why they you know, should have symptoms unless they're doing things that cause symptoms, you know, or there's an imbalance. A lot of times from what I've seen in my short life, on the research that I've read, and basically uh, just living my life and professionally and just as a civilian, I can tell you that nutrition is probably the top of the list of uh, the reasons why we have problems. And it's because we have deficiencies, nutrient-wise, nutritional deficiencies. And uh, a lot of people just don't eat right. Um, I even trip up all the time on this because it's so easy to eat something that just tastes better or something that is easier to eat and it requires less prep time or whatever. And it's so easy to eat bad. Of course, there's a lot more than just not getting good nutrition. And I'm talking about like getting real food in your body, you know, like eating real food, not processed food. And also, you don't want to be eating things that have MSG in it. <clears throat> and that also goes by different names like natural flavoring, artificial flavoring, spices. They use all those types of words, which the FDA says it's perfectly fine and legal to do so. So there's all kinds. I think there's over like 20 different names for MSG. And, uh, and that is not good for you at all. It's a type of excitotoxin, and uh, it will actually, in some people, it can actually stimulate um, uh, cells um, to the point of dying and destroying. It would actually like self-destruct because it overly excites your cells, basically to death. And so, you, you know, you don't want that, you know, going through your body, especially your brain and stuff. You don't want to be killing things. Some of us only have so many brain cells anyways. <laughs> so... Uh, <clears throat> When we talk about health, we have to also talk about getting good sleep. I mean, who on here is like me and struggles to get more than five hours of sleep? Like, I have things to do. And, you know, even though I do them a lot better when I'm, when I'm rested, I typically don't get a lot of sleep. Now, lately I've been forcing myself to get seven hours. It's, it's kind of like sometimes I just have to lay there in bed and just try to get to seven hours. But for a lot of people, they get five to six hours. That's kind of like what's typical in America from what I've seen. But you probably want to get a little bit more. Seven to eight probably for most people. And let's say most because not everyone has the same requirements of sleep. They typically say, and, and the studies have shown, the older you get, the less sleep that you typically require. I know my grandparents, they were only getting like maybe four or five hours of sleep sometimes. And they were like, fine. Uh, when I was younger, you know, especially as a teenager, and this is quite normal, I wanted like 10 hours of sleep because I was growing and I had some really large growth spurts and in a short period of time. And that's normal for a teenager, adolescent, you know, especially early adult too, to get eight to 10 hours. Some people need even more than that. So a lot of parents think that your, you know, their children are lazy or they're just depressed when they really just need freaking sleep because their body is building and growing. 
<clears throat> and that's really important to get those nutrients we just talked about if they need the core building blocks to grow and build the body. So make sure that your kids and even yourself has these, these raw materials. And that's why in this day and age, you typically have to supplement. <clears throat> Not the kind of crap supplement that you get like at Walmart and they come out to be like a penny or two per tablet. No, uh, that's crap. Uh, you know, how much real nutrient can you get for a penny or two? Uh, you know, so just do common sense math and, and extrapolate. You know, uh, most of that has been shown anyways that anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of over on the shelf uh, commercial uh, supplements are not even bioabsorbable, which means you can't absorb them in your body. Therefore, you cannot metabolize them and use them uh, as a building block. They actually just pass through the body. Next, let's kind of reduce the caffeine loads on our body, man. Uh, you know, I'm not knocking coffee per se, but you can get decaf. You know, let's totally knock out soft drinks, though. That has no part and no, no rationale in your life at all. It's totally not uh, beneficial. Uh, and when we talk about water, a lot of people say, yeah, you know, uh, tap water is pretty much the same as bottled water. And believe it or not, that's actually true. Uh, for the most part, a lot of bottled water is just tap, tap water from various cities across America. And they just bottle it and ship it around as if it's some type of, you know, some type of better water uh, than your water. Well, there are different qualities of water depending on where you live in the world. And especially here in the United States, there's been a lot of different municipal water companies ranked in terms of the purity and the taste and all that stuff, which taste typically, it depends on the minerals in the water. But when you talk about actually getting pure water, like purified, clean water, uh, municipal types of water sources aren't that at all. I mean, think about all the pipes. Some of those pipes have lead in them, and they attract all kinds of other type of degree, debris and stuff, particles and dirt. Uh, a lot of this stuff, water is actually recycled from uh, the treatment plant over there in the sewer district or the sewer plant, you know, type of um, reprocessing. And uh, that water comes through and there's pharmaceuticals, there's trace amounts of all kinds of prescriptions. Uh, there's been a lot of research in New York about this, that the water has all kinds of trace amounts of prescription drugs. Do you want that? No. So you're going to want a real filter, like a Berkey filter. You know, I have a big Berkey. Um, I promote that heavily. I, I don't, uh, you know, work for Berkey. I don't do, I don't get nothing for it. I'm just saying simply, get you a good, a really good freaking filter that can filter out pesticides and herbicides, uh, any kind of toxins, prescription drugs, fluoride. All this crap is not beneficial. You don't need me to tell you this. This is like completely common sense but people don't do nothing about it. And then they wonder why they have long-term health effects because of it. And the next thing is going to be processed food, but just in more particular, but the processed sugar. When you take off the, the fibrous hole, that, that shell on there, like the cane sugar, if you eat just like whole cane sugar, that ain't that bad for you at all. There's no evidence that that leads to any type of diabetes, because the, the amount of sugar that gets actually absorbed uh, from the gut into the bloodstream is very slow and trickles because uh, of the fiber helps to modulate that uptake and absorption of sugar. But in terms of actually eating processed sugar, that's a whole nother story. You don't have the fiber or the fiber shell. You don't have any of that. You don't have any nutrients. It's all been stripped away in the processing process, if you will. And so the you know processed sugar is just crap, and it doesn't give you nothing. In fact, it pulls nutrients. And I've done a video on this, but people don't really watch the channel very much anymore, so whatever. But it pulls the nutrients from your body. So go figure. Your body actually becomes more nutrient deficient every time you eat sugar than it helping your body. So cut out the daggone sugar, man. Why do you do that to yourself? Just cut it out. The next thing, oils. And people think, oh, olive oil is great for you. Well, maybe if you ate it in the fresh form right from the actual plant or the, you know, 
whatever it is, olives or avocados or whatever, that kind of oil, coconut oil right from the source, from a fresh fruit, that is fine. But most people do not consume it that way. Simply put, they actually eat things that have been processed and bottled. And guess what? They oxidize. Oils oxidize. And look into it. It's nothing like brain science again. This oxidation is clearly the number one reason for inflammation, especially vascular inflammation that leads to heart disease. It hardens the arteries. Okay? It attracts plaque to the walls of the arteries. Causes buildups and, and blockages because of it. People die because of this inflammation. Processed oils are like one of the worst things you can do. So, so of course, you know, whatever. You're going to probably do this anyways because it's so convenient to eat these things and uh, have these things in your life. For example, potato chips. Or maybe having like olive oil on your salad. Yeah, it looks healthy. You know, the people in the Mediterranean diet over there in the Mediterranean, uh, they do it. So how can that be wrong? Oh, really? That is completely not healthy. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good foods you can eat out there. I'm not like, oh, everything's bad uh, by any means. But you have to look into how you actually eat and prepare foods. You know, olive oil is not inherently, you know, evil or bad. Or It's just when you let it oxidize and you have it processed, it is bad. And it just totally destroys the body because of the inflammation. And inflammation is pretty much one of the main reasons why, if not some people believe the sole reason we have disease states um, outside of nutritional deficiencies. So where does that leave us now? We talked about having enough sleep, uh, staying well hydrated and having clean water. What about stress? Now, stress is freaking amazing. It's everywhere. You know, people ask me a lot, you know, why don't you have an Instagram account? Why don't you have a Facebook account? Why aren't you on MySpace? Why aren't you this and that and Twitter this? You know what? I don't need any more than I need. I already have a handful of emails accounts and I have several YouTube accounts that is plenty for me. What do I need? To know? I have a phone. I get phone calls. I get text. What what more can I handle? I can't really handle much more. Can you? I mean, I don't even see how you guys even do it. And maybe you don't do it. Maybe this is really wearing on your health. Maybe you should pull back on technology. I get a lot of questions about this crap. And it's amazing. It's like, well, look at your life. Look at your lifestyle. It is killing you. But it's supposed to be modern. Modern, yes. But does it lead to death quicker? Yes. Why would you care about modern? Modern is not always good. So, um, yeah. It's really disturbing to see where we're going as a culture. We're moving away from each other, from having interpersonal relationships. Everything has to be done uh, via text or, uh, you know, we don't even do phone calls hardly anymore. Maybe an email or Instagram or a one-sentence Twitter thing. Uh, I don't even get into that. I just totally ignore that whole thing. But it's there. And that's, for some people, their main interactions. Besides going to a job and they do their little job, especially most people, they, they tell me that they have these, these very repetitive jobs. Guess what, though? You picked the job. You know, it didn't like come knocking on your door, most likely, and say, hey, you have to work in a factory or you have to do this. And it's so repetitive. When I was much younger, um, and I'll divulge this about me because I don't really talk about me. I don't show myself and all this. And I'm sure this is also a reason why people don't, um, you know, possibly frequent the channel that much compared to other people who do, do show their face and they're real open about their personal life. I'm just not that way. But I will tell you this. Um, I worked in some repetitive ass jobs when I was young. And I mean, I'd done a lot of jobs in my life trying to figure out what the heck, what the heck should I be doing with myself? And I can tell you, though, that that was all brought on with my own decision-making. No one did that. I'm the one that applied to the job and got hired and did it for those years. So, you know, freaking A, you know, who is there to blame but me? And so if you're unhappy about your life, make some freaking changes, man. Quit complaining about it. And I mean, I was really guilty of doing that. I was complaining a lot toward the end there at a few of my jobs. And the manager would sometimes just come over and say, hey, I've never even met anyone like you. 
that complains and doesn't do nothing about it. And I got thinking, I was like, damn, I got kind of stuck in my own little narrow tunnel vision. And if it wasn't for other people kind of mentioning stuff, then I wouldn't have probably moved on like I did. And sometimes you just got to get fed up too. You got or hit the bottom. You got to just, you know, bottom out on something and go, man, I I just can't continue this. It's just not working. So you got to make some changes, man. And I'm not talking about the Obama changes. And no, that's kind of the crap change. We don't need those kind of changes. We need like real fundamental changes, excuse me, fundamental changes about uh, who we are and being, being more who we are than we're not. Some people, a lot of people just live a lie, a life of lies or deceit or falsehood because they don't want to confront, you know, uh, their bigger self because it's a little bit frightful to actually be uh, yourself in its wholeness and its largeness because it's a little bit intimidating to get started. But once you start becoming who you are, you actually become much more fruitful and you barrel all kinds uh, uh, of of amazing uh, outcomes that can come from that, if that makes sense at all. And so this is this is the, the speak today. This is the talk that there's multiple parameters uh, of health. And I don't know how many I've covered already, but uh, there's enough there. Let's just chew on that for a while. Um, there's all kinds of other health uh, parameters. Um, but let me tell you, you know, getting exercise or at least some movement um, is going to be very beneficial Probably staying off the computer as much as possible is beneficial. And uh, making decisions that are going to be the best for yourself and just being honest with yourself that that the shortcut isn't always the best uh, route to your destination. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, there's a link down below to my ebook, uh, The Art of Prepping, a preparedness review, if you're interested. Uh, thank you for your support and for the comments and questions over the, the past months. And um, I will catch you later. Beep.